Hello, hello, hello. I suppose I'm live again. I'm just going to do some chats while I uh, play some music in the background. So let me turn on the, the radio for a moment. Uh, this is the great Johannes speaking, by the way. Johannes Mattis Conrad. I got a couple of strikes on my TikTok today, so I can't really, uh, you know, can't really post anymore on my main account. It can take up to 90 days before my strike's clear. And then uh, we'll see about that later, right? I'm just going to do some chatting, like random stuff. All right, got the music on. Hope it's not too loud. Hey, everybody. Some people are joining already. Uh, so I got some strikes on my main TikTok account and I won't be posting uh, there for a while. I have my backup accounts at johannesmk.isback and at johannesmk.backup. <laughs> uh, you, you'll, you'll see me appear on, on TikTok anywhere, you know. So I'm just going to do a little chat session if you have any questions to ask or so. So today, uh, today my hat came in the mail, finally, after some delays, uh, because I thought, you know, I'm going to start wearing hats. Now, normally you won't wear a hat indoors. So I'm not going to do that all the time. But, uh, technically, you're supposed to wear, uh, wear a hat um, in public spaces and when you're on the move, like when you're riding a horse or driving a bus or something, riding a, riding a tram and so on. Right? Yeah, so the strikes, I made a video uh, quite a while back already, a few weeks back, about my personal backstory, like my origin story, where I spoke about my childhood and how I, how I dealt with that, how I overcame lots of issues. And it was taken down for a hate speech. <laughs> Maybe because I said, all I said was like, I didn't really like people anymore at some point. No, this is, this is weird. It's probably some gangs of people, they, uh, they don't like me. So they visit my account and they just gang up on reporting certain videos. Uh, I suppose there was another video that I made about uh, the first minister of Scotland because a video of him appeared from 2020 where he said that there were too many white people in Scotland, too many white judges, too many white uh, police officers or whatever. Scotland is still a 96% white country, so you'd expect people to have a job in Scotland to be white, duh, you know? And then they make that guy the first minister and he wasn't even elected. He was simply appointed, just like Rishi Sunak of England appointed. And then you have this other guy in Ireland, Leo Varadkar, also a foreigner. You know, what's going on here is very, very weird, very, very strange. It's almost as if the Western elites are selling out. They're selling our countries to others, to the higher bidders, simply so that they may stay rich and somewhat powerful, right? While they sell us all out. It's just absolutely disgusting, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, origin story sounds very interesting, yeah. Yeah, uh, I got a strike simply for sharing my personal story. I didn't even say anything about foreigners or Jews or whatever. Just It was just about me, uh, uh, you know, and life, really. It's so weird, you know. Anyway, I don't have a program for this session. I'm going to try to do uh, TikTok, no, live streams on TikTok uh, every day for an hour or so. I didn't watch Europa The Last Battle. It was way too long. It's like 12 hours or so. I saw some excerpts, but you know, anybody who, who has read ser several books already knows uh, most about it anyway. So, uh, Like the books by David Irving, for example. Though I don't quite trust David Irving. He's very detailed, right? He was one of, the, one of the first historians who actually looked into the German archives and read everything in German. And okay, he paints a very different picture, but still he's a British person working for the British, right? So you never read really know. I didn't watch Ancient Apocalypse either. I never even heard of it. So tell me what it's about, you know. I don't know. I can talk tomorrow and talk more to you. I wonder what's your opinion on Serbia and its position in the US, EU, Russia conflict. Uh, Serbians, yeah. Tough people, great people. You know, uh, you live by the Adriatic Sea. That's all about I know about it. And you have a capital called Belgrade. Uh, Serbians, like everybody else, the Croatians and so on, and the, and the Czechs and the Slovakians, if we Europeans want to survive, we will have to do it together, right? So we're going to have to unite in this new united Europe that I envision, right? Where we somehow make a stand against precisely these people putting their puppet presidents and their puppet prime ministers every, in, every, in every one of our countries. We have the right to craft a destiny of our own. Right? No matter what it takes, even if it means leaving 80% of our people behind, it's better that the, the other 20% survive and have something to aspire to 
an apotheosis or, or a new religious goal or some new space goal. I mean, I'm not against space travel or anything. If you if you heard my me talking about the moon landings, I criticize, I question this, right? But I still I still would find space travel extremely adventurous. It's certainly something we might want to do, you know? But perhaps we would be better off doing it on our own and not necessarily having to make sure that the first person on Mars is a transgender queer or something, right? Why would you even make that a goal, you know? You know, what's my opinion about paganism? You know, everything is effectively paganism, right? Uh, even Catholicism itself draws heavily on ancient Egyptian occultism. You, you can't really call that uh, advanced. It's very different. But in Europe, of course, we used to have our, our faith, our principles here, yeah? our, uh, what do you say, our belief systems. We didn't have one religion and a book or something like the Edda, the, the poetic Edda and so on, the prose Edda. They came much later. That was already writ Those books were actually written near the end of the Viking Age when it was technically heathendom was almost over anyway. All right. Uh, and the heathen people of Europe, they had their own beliefs, their own. It's all very different. There, there's a book by a, a Dutch author, Jan de Vries, who wrote a book in German called uh, The Spiritual World of the Germanic Peoples. The Geistige Welt der Germanen. And that book, it really summarizes the psyche of the old Norsemen, right? And they were, uh, these people, they were, they were, they were like Spartan. They were, they were so, so strong, really, so unafraid of things. And you had to be unafraid. If you're going to leave Norway and you go to Iceland, you cross this, this cold, you know, rough sea, you know, you got to be, you got to have balls, right? So, yeah, Christmas is paganism, for example, but so is Easter. It comes from Ostara, which was a, a sort of pagan goddess. And, and there are many examples like that, you know. Uh, many things were Christianized. Uh, a, a Marxist thinker, Eric Fromm, he actually described Christianity as heathenism with Christian symbolism. So he went a step further even. But what the point here is, is that paganism, all paganism, is sort of ancestral worship, right? And you believe that either you are going to reincarnate as some one of your ancestors when you die, so you come back. For example, when a child was born among the ancient German peoples, just after a grandfather had died, they gave the child the name of the grandfather, thinking he was his grandfather's reincarnation. They believed in reincarnation. The Christians don't believe that anymore. The Christians believe in uh, everybody going to heaven, right? So that's a break from the cycles of paganism. Now, you can all have your opinions about this or that religion, but, you know, in the end, uh, in the end, it's all about do you tap into a certain spiritual strength that you can use to, to motivate your people to aspire for something more than merely being a taxpayer on Earth? Nobody, nobody was born to be a taxpayer and nobody was born to be a, a, an employee. We were actually born to be free, but this requires struggle. If you don't want to fight, then you will submit. You will submit to someone else who is stronger or someone else who appears to be stronger. doesn't even have to be stronger, right? <laughs> you know. Uh, the Kaaba and Mecca is basically also pagan, yeah, probably. It, doesn't it represent Saturn in some way? Because if you have like a square box and you hold the sharp point looking at your eye, right? The, the sharp point, sharp edge is looking at you. It has the form of, uh, doesn't it have the form of something like uh, the, the the Star of David, effectively? And that's supposed to represent Saturn, I believe. You know, I, I looked into this Star of David thing. What does it really mean? In, in ancient times, the furthest most planet that human beings could see at night with their naked eyes was Saturn. And then there were like a total of six celestial bodies or six planets. I think Earth, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and perhaps there was one more, like Jupiter. I think Saturn is, for, is Saturn the one further away than Jupiter? Then you have six planets. Otherwise, it would also be the sun. Either way, those six, that's the Star of David. The six points represent those six planets that are visible with the naked eye, or, or, or I don't know if you're sure if it's six planets, but the star itself then also represents, this, represents the sun. And so you have, um, it, it, this comes back also in the names of the week, by the way. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it starts on Saturday. That's Saturn. 
right? Saturday, the Saturnalia of the Romans. Sunday, that's the sun. Monday is moon day, that's the moon. Tuesday is probably tears day, and tear means something like God. And Wednesday is Woden's day, Wotan. Thursday, Thor's day, Thor. Freya, Freya's day, Friday. That's Freya. And Freya, of course, is the woman. Thor is the, the masculine virility. Wotan is probably the god of death. Tyr is then the god of life. Right? So it's Saturn, the sun, the moon. Right? Tyr, the god of life. Odin, the god of death. Thor, male virility. And Freya, female sexuality. So they made a whole story about that, you know? Really? Okay. Let me read some of your some of your comments, you know. Okay, for those of you joining, I'm just chatting and I'll, I'll try to interact a little bit with the audience, you know. Don't always have everything to say, you know. This is a fedora flag, someone asks. Uh, it's actually, it has the measurements of the Indiana Jones hat, but I got the black one, you know. I'm going to wear it like outside, like normally. So you have like a normal hat for uh, going uh, going outside, doing your shopping or whatever, you know. I made a video about this today, you know, I think, you know, people, men quit wearing hats, probably because of cars, because the car ceilings are so low for aerodynamics, you can't wear a hat while driving anymore. And so men thought it was cumbersome, but you know, if you no longer wear, drive a car anyway, you know, the car body became effectively the shield against wind and rain and sunlight, right? So now, so you didn't need a hat anymore. But then again, if you don't drive, a, if you don't have a car, don't drive a car, then why not start wearing a hat again, you know? I look very pilgrim, you yeah? <laughs> know? The meteors are fake, you yeah? know? You think so? I don't know if the meteors are fake, you know? You know, the censorship is getting really extreme everywhere in the world. You hear these stories about the World Economic Forum that they want to uh, push for, what is it? Uh, an internet passport. The talk of this has been going on for a long time. But an internet passport means you can be banned once and you will not be able to use the internet any longer. I wonder if they'll still allow you to use banking apps then, or do you actually have to go to your bank to, to withdraw cash or something? Because or so, they're going to make everything cashless. So then getting banned from the internet may be a death sentence because maybe you won't be able to use your banking apps anymore. Then what are you supposed to do? Sell yourself into slavery or work for, uh, you know, join the military, you know? The flag is my logo for my podcast, but it's the Danish uh, eagle. The da it's Odin's, uh, Odin's raven, not an eagle, Odin's raven. And the flames are my own. It's supposed to fly up into the wind toward victory, you know. Yeah, the digital idea is a real totalitarian control state, someone says. Yeah, it's absolutely horrible, yeah. I do think TikTok has more freedom than, say, Facebook or so, but although Twitter X under Elon Musk gives me more freedom than... Uh, than TikTok. So my ranking system of platforms with most freedom of speech would be X, Twitter X, TikTok, and then, well, everything else is, isn't even worth mentioning because <laughs> you don't have freedom of speech on those platforms, you know? You know? Uh, my podcast is on, uh, for example, on YouTube at The Great Johannes. Or, or, you go to, or you can go, or you can subscribe to my uh, newsletter, www.jmk.info. Uh, Here, I'll put on my substack. This one, www.jmkinfo. I'll show it one more time. Uh, you can go there and I'll send out my podcast whenever I make a real one. These kinds of uh, stream replays, I also post them to my YouTube at The Great Johannes. Uh, you can just go and find them there alone. You know? Yeah, Twitter is getting better nowadays, yeah. And Gab, I used to be on Gab for a bit. But I felt you don't have the reach. You don't have the same reach as on, uh, on uh, you know, Twitter or, uh, or TikTok, you know. Will Elon Musk save freedom of speech if he can save himself? Because the whole deep state doesn't like him. So, you know, they don't want, they don't want to have a platform where people can actually speak the truth. Especially when even the, the president's account, Joe Biden's account, gets slapped with community notes where people point out that what he said wasn't so, you know. It's, they really don't like that, you know? <laughs> so would the platforms be a catalyst for new censorship laws? Because there's been too many provocateurs, you know? Yeah, probably. But, you know, they see everything as a provocation. We don't live in a democracy anymore in the Western world. Have you noticed? 
what we have in the Western world today is really just a communist dictatorship. It's a totalitarian system where apparently whatever weird globalistic foreigners get to decide what we in our own countries are even allowed to think or feel even or what we are allowed to do in our, you know, what we're allowed to write about and talk about. We don't have a democracy anymore. This all it's all a show. It's 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 basically a waste of time to try anything in terms of, of politics, you know. If you want to take back Europe, it will have to be done in the streets. So you can read, for example, uh, read about uh, Che Guevara's book on guerrilla war. It's a good book, actually, even though he, he was like a, a Marxist leftist, but you know. Everything we need to do has been done before, so we can just study what they did before and then do it ourselves. Yeah? Any thoughts on Ireland's new speech laws? Yeah, they're draconian, man. Right? If you won't give the cops your passport for your phone so they can check your uh, Telegram and WhatsApp messages, you can get instantly 12 months in jail for that. And obviously, if they find anything on your phone, you'll, you'll get three years, right? So it's absolutely disgusting, you know? Yeah, the leftists, yeah, they're, they're in charge and they're constantly growing, yeah? Democracy is a utopia that never existed, yeah. Especially modern democracy where everybody gets a vote. That is basically a lie. It's just simply a tool to manipulate people. By through the act of voting, you are only doing two things. You are signaling, signaling that you don't agree with the government. So they know that they still have to crack down on you. Right. You're literally telling them that you don't believe them if you vote for uh, an alternative party. And I suppose, secondly, when you by voting in a democracy, you are also saying that you are now complicit in whatever decisions your gov government makes against you. If they decide to go to war or, or purge, purge the natives and say, well, you voted for it. You wanted all those immigrants. You voted for the open border parties. Oh, you thought you were going to get a raise. Oh, you thought you were going to get affordable housing, but you also voted for the immigrants. So bye. They're literally wiping us out. It's just communist, absolute, ruthless, totalitarian, mad communists pushing for the genocide of our people in our own countries. We have every right to do something about something, you know. Whatever way, whichever way, whatever the poss possibilities are. We don't have the luxury to imagine our, our fantastical futures, right? But we do have the ability to stand up for ourselves. Especially, I think, if, uh, you know, if we have some kind of spiritual connection going on. And that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make more videos about that, about how to win back a sort of spiritual connection, you know? Hello from Ireland, yeah. Yeah, cultural Marxist, also known as the ivory tower professors from the university. Yeah, they're really weird because they, they think they're allying with women, but then again, women are generally even more right wing than these, you know, university professors. You know, it's just strange that they are. Uh, why are they like that? You know, they're control freaks. They, they, they don't want power, they want control. That's not the same thing. Control is basically getting everybody in line, do what you're told. And that's a typically leftist thing. Like that's what Uncle Kaczynski, Uncle Ted, Ted Kaczynski always used to write about, about the over-socialized leftist. Yeah? Hello from Germany. Yeah? We used to have a communist regime in Eastern Germany. Yeah, exactly. Are you familiar with Orania? I believe separatist states are the future for ethnic Europeans. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, Orania is one. But imagine having thousands of those where we can manage our own affairs, perhaps a bit more primitively, you know, but we would have our own version of the Internet, for example, which would be free again. right? Uh, I can imagine this. I can imagine people from Europe who are totally fed up with this communist dictatorship to leave and literally voluntarily move to Siberia because there's actually room there. There's freedom to hunt and to chop wood and to build your own cabins. There's fresh water from the streams. You can hunt, you know, it might actually be very exciting to do something like that, to, to explore these vast uninhabited woodlands of Northwestern Eurasia and also of Siberia and so on. You know, this is something worth trying. If, if you can only figure out a way to either defend yourself or hide from authorities, make yourself so small that no one will want to come after you, right? Because they're going to try to come after you anyway. 
I, I watched a video explaining that the African Americans are actually an entirely new race of people because they are a mixture of all sorts of Africans and of white people as well. They have up to like 25% or maybe up to 40% white DNA as well. But they're a mixture of all these Africans, right? And uh, so the Angolans and the Senegalese and the, and the Congolese and the, uh, you know, and the, and the Nigerians and so on, and the Ghanaians, I suppose most, most, of our, most are actually from Ghana, but they're, they're a new race. They're an artificial new race that was born in the past few centuries due to the slavery and the mixing that went on. And I think this is why the real reason why our globalists so fancily push these push these uh, African Americans out. Why they rewrite all our mythologies and all our, all our fairy tales uh, into leading roles played by them, because they truly believe that they, our elites, right, the the Western elites believe they are playing God. They created a new race from nothing, and now they're going to promote this race and make it like, you know their pet their pet race basically it, it's really weird but i think that's what they're doing i think they love the idea that they created a sort of frankensteinian race of people or um like there's a story about some mad doctor living on an island who experience who experiments with different species of animals and he puts them all together don't know what the name of that book was but something like that's what they do man they play god they think they're they've created a new mankind the african-american basically and they want to promote it out to make it all, all uh, you know, Dr. Moreau, exactly. The island of Dr. Moreau, you know, the human zoo. Oh, what's the human zoo about? You know, yeah. we just need to return to the old ways, reject modernity, rise beyond. Yeah, we need to reject modernity, reject this whole transhumanist bullcrap. It's only going to get worse. The transgenderism, the transhumanism combined, the gender neutral society, the African-American new race. All of this combined is, is total hell on earth. Uh, anybody who wants to stay healthy and stay sane needs to get the hell away from that. Like quit watching TV and so on. Yeah, Frankenstein's monster and uh, the island of Dr. Moreau, exactly. Creepy, yeah? Return to the Land by Asha Logos on YouTube is a great listen. Yeah, I know Asha Logos. I probably haven't seen this one yet, but we should return the people to the land and the land to the people. In the end, all we really need is some fertile land where we can either graze our cattle or grow crops or whatever it is, right? And then some, some wood, say, for example, uh, uh, the, the Northwest Eurasian woodlands that are still sparsely populated. We need to start moving our people out. And I wonder how to do it. I can promote it on my TikTok. Other people can keep promoting it. But in the end, you need a little bit of funding to get people actually out there to show them the adventure to show them that this isn't bad it's not a bad idea to move to central northern scandinavia for example if you want to stay within the civilized world you know, northern scandinavia is so pristine so beautiful so quiet you know you can live there by yourself you can have a bunch of kids there if you get bored you know uh, i didn't read the book transhumanism by uh Yuval Harari, yeah. that weird, weird man. I enjoyed somewhat his original book, the first one, Sapiens. But then the second book was all about the transhumanism. Yeah. And this is what they really, they're really thinking about that. They want to play God and create their own new humanity by mixing people up in such and such quantities and qualities to create what they probably want uh, as their slave race, their perfect slave race. The one that is motivated but never questions his condition. I don't even think that's possible though. This is also why they dream about robots. They want those human looking humanoid robots so badly so they can start replacing humans with robots who will do every their do their every command. I mean, why would you want if you're very wealthy and you have like a staff of 40 people living in and around your house, right? Your workers and your uh, cleaning ladies and so on. You got 40 people on hand to service your house if you're very wealthy, right? Why would you want humans if you can have robots who never complain, who you don't have to pay? See, this is what they want. See, they, they really, these people hate humanity. Elon Musk said that about um, George Soros. George Soros just truly hates humanity. And I think he's right. I think George Soros is like a psychopath, psychopath, you know? Very, very bad man. Homo Deus, yeah. Yeah, they want to create like the perfect man, but it's just going to be a, a slave robot, really. It's just horrible. 
People are, af are afraid of nature these days, yeah. Yeah, well, I like to go hiking sometimes. I went hiking in northern Sweden and Lapland, also in the Hardanger Vida in uh, Norway, southern Norway. Scandinavia, man, is so beautiful. And I've heard of a place in Montenegro that kind of looks like it as well. The mountains in Montenegro. I love nature. <laughs> I love nature. I love seeing these wild uh, moose or elks. I don't know which one we have in Europe. Elks, right? Elg. That's the Swedish word. It must be an elk. And the deer. You know, I love... I was in a, in a forest in Sweden once. And I was just walking. There was no one there. It was already getting a bit cold in the winter time, actually. Turns out the Swedish people don't actually go outside in the cold. They just stay indoors in the winter times. But I went hiking in the cold, in the snow. I got some spikes for under my shoes so I could walk without slipping. And all of a sudden I see these deer jumping very nearby myself, jumping across the stream, jumping across the meadow and then back into the woods. It was so beautiful. What I also saw, uh, I, came, I was hiking through these uh, rural towns in Sweden. They're very, very pretty. And they don't even have uh, paved roads yet. It's dirt roads or snowy roads in the wintertime. And I saw the sun was out. The clear sky was cold. But I saw two deer resting on a, on a meadow, on a field, on a farmer's field. They saw me. I saw them. And so I waited a little bit to just observe them from a distance. right? And it looked like they were observing me as well. It was just so beautiful to see these deers in the sunlight. And then I approached them a little bit. And of course, they ran off immediately. Right? Yeah, the Swedes in the countryside, they love their horses, man. They love horse riding. They got plenty of horse farms there. If you've never been to the Swedish countryside, where they have these all these red houses, the red farmhouses, go there, man. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, live on, living off the land is impossible in any industrialized nation. Yeah, It's too expensive to buy the land, and, and you can't probably can't do it unless you inherit a lot of money. But I suppose... Uh, there are places in the world, Siberia, you know, Northwest Eurasia, Northwest Russia, Belarusia. There are places where you can go even in Europe. And in the USA, of course, you can go in certain parts of Alaska or uh, also Canada, of course. It's not impossible. You just need the will to do it and accept that your, your life is going to be different forever. Now, I would not recommend going out of the loan, but do it more like the, the Mennonites or uh, something like that or the... Or the Amish, right? Where you have a small community of like-minded people. I just start over, you know. Brother, what's what's your take on the white genocide in South Africa? Well, you're a minority and you own the land. You still own a lot of the land. And so the black majority, 55 million people, they hate you. They want you gone and dead or poor or living in shacks and rotting away as... Uh, as bums already. That's their dream. They want to humiliate you. Basically, they will not stop until you are all crying and thinking of suicide. They will humiliate you to the core. In order to survive that, you need to have your own land. You need to have land that you can defend, right? And since you're not going to get any backing from the Western world, not until so, some great leader arrives in, uh, in Europe, right, who will take charge, but until then, you're on your own. And this is going to be a very, very hard struggle. I suppose you can try having a lot more children, but then you got to defend them and feed them. Yeah? You should join the Knights of Columbus, Johannes. I don't know what that is. Are you? Uh, what do I think of Geert Wilders' PVV of the Netherlands? Controlled opposition. He's basically a Jewish man whose loyalty lies with Israel. And he just used the Dutch people to trick them into voting for him. So that's my point, you know. Living off the land, yeah. Living on nature. What is small? The Knights of Columbus is a Catholic fraternal men's group. Okay. Well, I'll look into it, but, you know, I was baptized Roman Catholic. You know, I'll look into what that what that is and if it's useful for me. You know, I looked into, like, Freemasonry if I thought I would want to join. No. <laughs> Freemasonry is basically just... Jewish occultism for white people is it's a bit weird they have this this whole boomer role play thing going on where you uh you you pretend to die or they it's like a mock killing they pretend to kill you or something like that and they pretend to bury you 
and then you come back to life and now you're one of them right and then you belong you belong to the to the club right? it's just a bit strange yeah? i need to set All right, I'm gonna keep doing these uh, live shows every day if I can, but I don't always have too much to say, so I might sometimes block out a little earlier. All right, I'm running out of things to say, so I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow again. Uh, I'll come back with more topics. Usually I, I'll think of something, you know, something useful. Uh, you can go to my uh, go to my website. Let's see where can you go. You can go to my uh, YouTube at the Great Johannes, and you can go to my Twitter at Johannes MKX. And if you want to stay in the loop with my newsletter, it's www.jmk.info. So I'll talk to you later and talk to you uh, talk to you tomorrow. Later.